Well, friends, we're back, and I am. I'm feeling a little bit more wind blown. We got the wind blowing, and I'm now worried about the daylight, but that's okay, because, see, Jamera, why can't you get the Homestead Update video done? Trying, trying, we're doing it, yay! <laughs> so I took, and now I think there's a cow in the background. That's not my cow, or it's a donkey. Hold on, we'll hear it again. So, I got a lot of requests over on the YouTube, over here on YouTube for um, Homestead Update video, I've said that 20 times now, it's well established. I took a lot of questions off of Instagram. I found out today how to go back in my archive and then swipe up, swipe up, Jay Morrell, that's the key, swipe up and I could get to all those questions. So, whew, I'm going to start answering your Homestead questions now. We're gonna go walk down and let the chickens out at some point. I'll show you what's going on. Got questions about the pool. Got questions about all the things. So let's do this. So my girlfriend over at Woodwater Farmhouse said, just a garden update would be great. And I've got a lot of garden questions. How'd the garden turn out? How was your harvest? What did you can, comma, eat? Plans for a fall garden, fall crops? Maybe that's a separate question, but We'll just jump into garden, gardening. Uh, what crop grew the best by far? How are your crops doing? Okay, so basically, long story short, everyone wants to know about the garden. If you haven't seen my questioning everything potato harvest video, that would probably be a good one for you to go check out. I filmed that in July, and I will show you here in a minute what's happening in the garden now. The potato harvest was, not fantastic. We pretty much harvested the same amount. We pretty much harvested the same amount pound-wise in a miniature baby potatoes as we had planted. I think we had planted about 75 pounds or so. So, okay, so there's the potatoes. Um, my tomatoes, early on we had some that went red and we were getting tomatoes. Weirdest thing, don't know what it's called, don't know what causes it, but other ladies have told me the same thing happened to them. I had tons of green tomatoes and my tomatoes wouldn't turn red. I have grown tomatoes before. I don't, I don't know what happened. Tons of green tomatoes. So there's the tomato update. My corn fizzled out. No good with the corn. My cucumbers did a weird cross-pollination, yellowish, yellow, light green with some yellow tinge, weird mutant cucumber. Um, what else happened? I was getting some nice looking zucchinis and squash. So I just like, bear with me because all of this is story time with Jay Morrell. So kind of around the same time, you know, late July, early August-ish, because I was still hopeful since my garden was seemed so late and also learning about the soil I really planted in and all of that, I was still hopeful that things would really get trucking along here in August. At some point, this particular flock of ducks that I have been raising, the Pekin ducks, I got some jokers. The Pekin ducks, the guinea hen, and the geese, okay. Now, I have other ducks, I have rowans. They stay right here on the property, no big deal. This is gonna circle us back to the garden, okay? The rowans stay here, no problem. I have like basically 70 chickens. They all stay on the property, no problem. I have these seven Pekin ducks, three geese and a guinea hen. Oh, and two black Asian hens that have been raised with them. They're like the goof troop. And all of a sudden, one day, they were down in a neighbor's cornfield and also going to a busy road. Like, that has tractor trailers and high traffic. I couldn't believe it. I haven't had any animals do that. What is with these beacon ducks? It was like, come on. So, what I had been doing with them is I have this, you've probably seen it in other videos, it's this little brown A-frame building. I use it as a brooding house for the young various poultry that I'm raising, that way they're outside. It's a decent size. 
and it's a decent size. They can be in there exclusively their first couple weeks and then when I wanna start letting them out to have some free range time, we can move them during the day to this other metal house that I bought that I have shown. Um, they can peck around and get some grass and then once they, I eyeball them, feel my comfort level with the poultry in particular and at some point I start letting them out during the day just to free range around the backyard or whatever. So, these Pekin duck jokers, <laughs> this whole goof troop, they had got to the point where I was started letting them out during the day. And they probably had like, oh, seven to 10 days where they stayed up here during the day. During the day, they would join my separate flock family of Rowan ducks. It's cute how different ones like make their families and stay together. They would join them. Again, no issues. But then there was this one day where all of a sudden, Travis texted me, the ducks are in the cornfield and trying to go in this busy road. And we ran down there and yeah, they were. Chased them through a cornfield. Let me tell you, lots of fun adventures with those jokers. So all that to say, about this time, we had been working on the new duck coop and the new duck yard, but it wasn't done yet. Some things, you know, take a little time. So I put them all in jail back in the brooding house for a few days because I just thought, okay, jokers, you want to go down and play in traffic with tractor trailers, you're just going to have to stay cooped up for a few days. Then we ended up, we had several days of heavy rain. It was pushing our duck coop and duck yard project back and back and back. And finally, I thought like day four, okay, I cannot, because they, they weren't babies. The ducks get big, geese get big very quick. <laughs> just a, you know six weeks old and they look like they're grown so I thought okay I had read that ducks are supposed to eat bugs in a garden but leave your plants alone so I said you know what we got to get them out of this coop I did not want to put them in the chicken coop in the chicken yard I said let's just put them in this garden and see how they do and then in the meantime that'll give us time to finish up the duck coop in the duck yard so we put them in the garden they did really well and then at some point I realized, oh wait, they ate the zucchini. So the zucchini got donated to the ducks. And then one thing led to another and the ducks and the geese and the guinea hen and the two black Asians, again, they're all bonded. They're not leaving each other. They all spent pretty much the whole month of August in the garden. And by then I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm just, I'm done, 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 done. Mid July, I got my positive pregnancy test for Stuart baby number nine. And August was heavy, like first trimester, you know, two hour naps every afternoon and all that. So I'm like, hmm. and they left the tomatoes be, but again, like I have green tomatoes to this day. September's almost done. So yeah, that's what happened with that. Now, now one thing I did learn about this summer, never knew it was a thing, is that apparently we have one of the biggest produce auctions in our state hereby, like within 30 to 45 minutes. And actually one of our homeschool groups just went on a field trip there. We weren't able to go to that one, but that's a thing. My good friend, Ashley Bufa from Freedom Moms, she started going to produce auctions this summer. She's gotten lots of tomatoes. You can look over on her Instagram, just done a lot of things with it. I haven't got that far. Yeah, you do what you can do, right? I haven't done any more canning. Uh, my hopes are, I've done, I've done meat, I've done potatoes. I've done carrots. What else have I done? Come on, JMRL. I think that's all I've got done. My friend Chelsea encouraged me. She cans all year round. You don't have to just can in the summer. Obviously, if I would have had a great big harvest, then that would have been a good opportunity to do a lot of canning. That just made me think about my meat birds and what I'm doing with them and canning with that as well. But anyway, so my plan is, and I'm going to get to meat bird questions here in a minute with our butchering and everything that we got done. Yay. Uh, my plan is, is just to continue to can, get back into canning later this fall, can through the winter, can through the spring. I've got stuff in the freezers that I can can that I purposely, when we processed our meat birds, again, I'll get into that more specifically. But we broke them down enough, got them frozen, and then I plan to do a lot of canning with them this fall. That's my plan. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's see what else. So the garden was not, was not phenomenal. It was a fantastic experience overall. You have never seen happier children than my children on the day that we harvested those potatoes. It was joy. It was fun. They didn't care. 
that we harvested the same amount pretty much as what we planted. They loved the whole process. So next year, are we doing potatoes? You betcha, we're definitely doing potatoes. And actually, I'll show you where I, I'm not telling you I'm doing this 100%. I'm saying, I'm thinking this thought, and I think I can raise my camera here and show you. Okay, in the in this background here, let's see if I can point right, we got our meat bird dome that has a few uh, extra male ducks and roosters that are in jail right now, and we'll talk about that. And then way over here, I've got that little rabbit tractor, and then way down yonder where you see the trees and such, we've got a duck coop and a run and a chicken coop and run and all that. So this whole space here, that, meat bird dome we moved around that patch of ground and you may not be able to tell this right now but that actually is cleared it's evening it's after five now that gets tons of sun during the day and all summer what grew on it and what got moved around all summer tons of meat birds tons of meat bird food fer <laughs> fertilizer and so i was thinking maybe and if not next summer, you know, futuristic plan, it would be great to have like a dedicated corn patch there that could just be on that good fertilized ground and we could just fence off a certain area just dedicated to corn. So what is happening with our garden over here, I just want to call everything a joker. <laughs> What's happening with this joker garden over here is that the, oh, and I feel like I have to tell you. So my gangster ducks <laughs> and geese that we had to get out of the road they are now in the new duck coop and in the new duck yard. They have left brooding house jail and garden jail. And actually in the garden, they didn't get out. If we had anything that got out, what ended up happening was our rowan ducks flew in the garden and decided to live in there with them. So I had 21 waterfowl birds living in my garden for about a month. It was the rowans, the pecans, again, those two black Asians that think their ducks or geese, three geese, my guinea hen, which we've named Duck Duck Goose because she definitely thinks she's a waterfowl. Um, yeah, so anyways, 21 total between all of them. I think I said all the breeds. Now they're out of there. So what is in the garden now? Oh, also, that's prepping my ground for next year. Okay, good fertilizer. What's in there now is some of our goats. I put the goats in there just a few days ago. I said, let them, we're just gonna leave them in there a week or so. They can eat up what is left. They can put their own level of fertilizer on it. It's all good. So with the garden, and again, you'll have to go back. I'll put it in the description or just go back to my videos for this summer. Where we put the garden has never had a garden before. And our property here is not old fertile farmland. My gardens at our old farmhouse, that was old fertile farmland. Farms were all around, all over that place. Gardens were all over, fertilizer was all over. The folks before us had cows. I had a neighbor next door that had sheep and goats and I would have Travis drive his truck over and we would just load, they would get their scoop and we'd fill the back of his pickup truck and wherever I was gonna do a garden, we would just cover it and then we would just cover it and of course someone's doing a chainsaw now you know all the all the fun and exciting adventures and back then when i was covered with multiple babies and middle kids and didn't have any big kids i would just like by the lord's mercy and grace i would get plants in the ground i would hardly look at it stuff would grow and you can check my instagram i have a hashtag jamrell's gardens and you can just see like little Liam on a pile of pumpkins and the boys at the table and just all this produce all around. And we grew that and we didn't have to do much. I didn't even water it that much, honestly. I would have run a hose and I would water it a couple times a week. But really it was like in the back of the field, full sun, old fertile farmland. That's as far as my gardening has got. That's not what's happening here. And I picked that spot because that spot was closest to the house and a tree was down and it seemed like that was gonna be a good area to get a garden in. Excuse me while I scratch my nose. But I have a huge tree in that garden. Gonna get that cut out. We have pulled up the plastic and that drip irrigation system. I've never done that before. That's what the farmer friend put in for me. I just wanna cover everything the only way I know how. Tons of manure and compost. And that's my plan for this fall. I'm gonna keep, we've got our compost sitting. I have animal buildings to clean out. I have a rabbit hutch to clean up. I've got some different little poultry barns and stuff. It's just gonna be covered in a good mix of stuff. Plus the tree taken out, 
and we'll try again next year. That's all I got, so that's the garden plants. And then also, I gotta show you this. Yes, so in another video I filmed the other day, Daniel was pulling, the country kids, he was pulling his wagon and his load and his dinosaurs down the hill to play. Today apparently he's dragging it up. You taking that back? Yeah. Good, you're strong. Hey, I can work it in the grass. Yeah. Could you clean it up there? Right, but you're doing it now. Did you have fun today? I have to clean them off. Okay, did you have fun today? Yeah. Yeah. We went with our with one of our homeschool groups today and did a homemade boat race on a river and just did so many fun activities. So, and they had spider swings, they had all kinds of fun stuff. So you can look over on my Instagram for boat racing day pictures. And there's a rooster crowing in the background. So there you go, I kind of grouped a bunch of the garden success, failure, and future plan. Didn't go as good as it could have gone. It was a fun adventure. I don't like anything to be like a hard-nosed pressure. Uh, we did it, and it can only get better from here. There you go. Allison writes, what is left on your fall project list? So, fall project list. We got a couple more fencing projects we wanna get done. We have like where our land goes down and comes back up in the back of the house. It's probably, I don't know that that's an acre over there. I don't know. But anyway, there's this ridge and I want to do a ridge fence so that when we let the chickens and the ducks and such out to free range and we could even let the goats and different critters out, there's one fenced area and then from there they have their separate fenced area. Want to do the ridge fence this fall, we do not have the stuff for it. Now we also need to do a new fence along the front. It's actually, it's not, our property is mostly fence, but there's one little area up in front of me here that we need to finish the fence on and then do a privacy gate and such. And we have everything for that and that is sitting there. Now, I think we got that in July. It's been sitting there, but that will get done this fall. Also, upcoming projects. I don't know that this will be this fall. I would like for it to be. We shall see. You know, and in Virginia, we can have mild winters or we can have years where it seems like winter doesn't really start until a few weeks into February. <laughs> you know, we don't know what we're gonna get. Still 2020, right folks? But another project coming up on the project list is for Travis's wonderful equipment area. I wanna do a privacy fence for that. See, that's how you stay married for like 23 years. We're gonna do a nice privacy fence for that. Travis wants a shipping container. That's gonna be like happy birthday, happy Merry Christmas, happy New Year, happy Valentine's Day. Mr. Travis gonna get a shipping container there. Now futuristically, he's gonna get a big shop, but he's got certain specifications and such he wants with that shop. So we're not doing that quite yet, but he at least will have his like half acre domain. Actually, the amount that he told me wasn't as much as I thought. But anyway, he's got an area picked out. I'm looking over here going like this because it's flat and he's gonna put all of his man projects over there and a shipping container behind a privacy fence. And then way down yonder on one side, I want I want probably a cow area. And then a couple acres back on this side, we can have another big fenced area and way down, down that way, we got room for some pigs. So I know on here I've got upcoming projects. Back to the garden, plans for a fall garden, plans for fall crops. I'm not planning, I'm, I'm done. I'm good, I'm good, it was a good run. Uh, I've never done fall gardening before, and I've never done like early spring gardening. Not saying that I never will, but I'm not at this moment. So for the questions that fill, fit in the category of what upcoming projects do you have, those are some of the upcoming projects. I'm not sure how far we will get into fall, but some of the stuff is here, and we'll get the other stuff, and at some point we'll have that stuff done. And then by the time that stuff is done, we'll have a new stuff list. Any more animals coming to the family homestead? So as I already mentioned, I'm telling myself, I'm saying that next summer, I would love to have a cow and I would love to probably do two feeder pigs that we raise and then have processed. 
I'm actually going in November, a friend of mine, they're processing their pigs on their homestead and I'm gonna go and help and learn all about that. I don't know if our first year we will process pigs ourselves. I know that we processed over 100 meat birds and I know in a few weeks I've got some joker, uh, I've got some joker roosters and a few too many male ducks that I'm going to process. So we can process. I'm gonna learn about pigs. We'll see how that goes. So those are future animal plans. Now, uh, someone's asking about horses. What other animals would you like on your farm? Will you be getting a cow? Do your rowan ducks talk all the time? They don't, but they get chatty. Like they're behind me now and I don't hear them. Any new animals on the farm? Have you gotten any new animals? Do you plan on buying any horses? Do you want to own horses in the future? Anyway, I know I had several horse questions because I shared some pictures recently on Instagram of me growing up with horses and of me and my pony and of my kids on horses and at a horse farm and doing horsey things. So my mom is a ninja mom expert level, even in her 70s horsewoman. She can do it all. She has done it all. The woman is a horsewoman. <laughs> so she knows all the horse things. So all that to say, we have been looking for an older, like they call it like a bomb proof gelding. Uh, we would love one that's like 14, 15, 16 years old, you know, just an older gelding. And even at that age, they live a long time. One of my mom's horses lived to well over 40 years old. So I'm not worried about the age. We just want like an old camp pony, like a pony. Some of the ads that I have responded to have been like, you know, a pony that was used at a kid's camp ridden by kids from all over at various riding stages for like six hours a day. You know, that's that's the kind of pony that we're looking for. This time of year, being fall, sometimes you can find ponies that camps and such are getting rid of. Right now I have a lead on a pony that was rescued from the meat market. I mean, that's the reality of what happens to old horses or abandoned horses and such. They get sold at meat markets. So he was rescued from a meat market he was part of a group of animals that were abandoned by a children's camp when COVID hit. Again, I don't know all the details, um, but he's gained enough weight and such now that they're looking, looking for a home for him. So I'm going back and forth talking to them. Probably shouldn't be saying it now, but here I am saying it. I've gone back and forth and my mom and I have gone back and forth on many, many ponies and the right one just hasn't worked out yet. And she can tell by videos if a pony like is really good under bridle. She can look at their legs and see different things. She's just got an eye for all of it. So even this one pony that we liked this weekend, she saw the videos and she's like, no, pass girl, pass. There'll be another one. So this other one that I'm talking about, uh, he is, he seems promising he is an older gelding and he is from a camp and he supposedly has had a lot of experience with beginner children and he's supposedly a great pony to learn on. So we're getting pictures of him, we're getting videos, we're gonna feel that out and see how it goes. But my mom knows what she's talking about and if, if my mom says I can do it, I can do it, okay, okay. How many eggs do you get a day? Do you eat the duck eggs too? We don't have duck eggs yet. Our ducks are still young. I don't know exactly when they start laying. I did not grow up with ducks, but I did grow up with chickens. So ducks, no, hold on, I did grow up with ducks. <laughs> we did have ducks. Growing up, we had chickens that I definitely remember. We had ducks, but I don't remember ever getting eggs from them. So I remember raising ducks. I remember having baskets full of ducks and a pen full of ducks. But I don't know what to do with their eggs. Hey mom, what do we do with their eggs? But anyway, we will see about getting duck eggs. That will be something totally new once it starts. Will you use a light in your chicken coop so they lay more eggs in the winter? I've never done that with my chickens. I have done chickens for a long time. I just let them have a break in the winter. But my chickens usually start laying again in mid-January or so. That's when my new girls from the last house, the barred rocks I have now, they started laying in January. Then we moved in February. They did not really take a break from you know the stress of moving for laying. Uh, so that's good. Do chickens walk in the snow? Well, again, this isn't Montana or Wyoming. This is Virginia. We just get some little snows here and there. Every now and then we'll get a winter where we might actually get a couple big snows and they are fun. 
But in the winter, I still give my chickens the option to go out, and then they always have the option to go inside when they need to. Many times during the winter, like if it's really, really cold, the chickens might only come out for about 30 minutes or so. They're in their coop, they have hay in their coop, they have straw in their coop, and they're nice and cozy. And for the most part, that's where they like to go, but I like for them to have the option as well. And they'll, they'll go out and scratch around and find something. If it's heavy snow, they're not gonna be out for long. Have any of your chickens started molting, and do you have any issues with mites? Because my chickens are able to get out, they give themselves free range dust baths often. Down at this part of the property, whenever we let our chickens out, we've got about an acre or two over there and some woods, and that's where they like to hang out, where they go a lot during the day. This person says, "Are you back to horses. Are you planning on getting to horses? It'd be a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. I, again, I'm a farm girl originally. I grew up with horses. They are work, but I wouldn't consider them a lot of work. I mean, they need food, they need water, they need shelter. Any horse that we get would get a whole lot of attention and it would have companions with goats and sheep and such and farm animals and chickens and that's it. Someone asks, are you still using the original A-frame for ducks? So the original A-frame is a brooding house. Right now I actually have, right now I do actually have a few pullets in there and a few more ducks because Tractor Supply had a 50% off sale. So, you know. What do you feed all your chickens? So we always have a chicken scrap bowl and the chickens eat table scraps and the chickens free range and then we have laying feed that we give them. We don't give them laying feed in the morning because I want them to go out and find what they need in nature. Hey, that's free. Plus they get scraps in the morning as well. And then if we give them laying feed, it'll be at night. Okay, I'll come back to any chicken questions if I find any more. Someone else asks, any news on your bees? No, didn't get very far with bees. Again, bees came, but my hive and stuff didn't come in time. That was delayed in shipping. So I have a friend with, I don't know how many hives they have, but they have a lot of hives. And so I gave her my bees because I didn't have my equipment yet. It's like cart before the horse. So I ordered them and the original plan was I was supposed to have my hive at least a week before the bees got here. So I just, I didn't get back to that one this year. What is the workload truly like? Well, I did a video, like a daily chores type video where we did morning and evening chores. So in the morning, the chores take about an hour and in the evening it can take 15, 20 minutes. So that's, that's what it is. With all the animals, where's the poop going? Well, the poop has mainly been going on the compost. I have put the rabbit poop directly in the garden and then the other poop has been going on the compost. And we're just gonna continue to put it on the compost and then water that compost and do our compost things, turn it around some. The animals that we have are on the smaller side. So, you know, we don't have elephant poop going on here. So far the compost pile, it's really not as big as you would think that it would be. Also, our animals get to move around and go in the woods and uh, fertilize everywhere. Now we'll talk meat birds, meat birds, meat birds. How did your meat birds work out? Excited to hear how full your freezer got. Do your kids help you process the meat birds? How do they feel about it, especially the young? How many meat birds have you processed and how is that going? Did you like the dome thing you got for your, for your meat chickens and have you processed them yet? So there's the general meat bird type question. So the zip tie dome, not sponsored, not sponsored, that dome over there, it worked great. It worked absolutely great for the meat birds and they lived in it and we moved them all around. I did share some pictures over on Instagram. I did a small like setup type tour video for my for my special large family table community. So they have a video over there. I haven't done any videos of the actual processing. I just didn't know, you know, with YouTube and not everybody wants to see chickens butchered. I didn't do a video for you guys on it. But how, but how that went is we processed well over a hundred birds. We have a whole bunch of birds in the freezer. And like I said, we're gonna, and like I said, I hope to can a bunch of that, use a bunch of it. A lot of the kids helped. The last time we did over 70, we also had friends and family that came and helped. Pretty much all the kids were involved. Um, our, our plucker has gone wonderful. Our grill set up where we set up our outside 
We set up like an outside propane stove and I did the pots of water. I don't have a scalder yet. Those are, those are pretty pricey, but the plucker was definitely worth it and the pot of water is fine. One thing I learned is whenever I dunk the chicken in or whoever's dunking it, I literally only need to hold it in there for 15 seconds. Any longer, it starts to cook very, very quickly. When you put it in the plucker, it tears the meat easily. So our first like one or two bird, our first like two or so birds that happened. And then I figured out, okay, Jim Rail, you don't, don't leave it in there for two minutes, like literally 15 seconds. So we got good at it after that. And again, with my farm girl background, you know, I remember growing up and being right there when horses were being born and putting the placenta in the bucket and all of that. Being a mama with a whole lot of children, uh, also going to nursing school and a nursing background. I love anatomy. So it doesn't bother me butchering animals. Uh, I think it's cool. I love to see the bronchial tubes. I love going through the chambers of the heart, you know. I'm really not morbid. I'm really not morbid. I just, I think it's fascinating. God's creation is amazing. And I'm just able to handle processing animals. It may also go along with raising a whole lot of kids over the last couple decades. And you know, as a mama, you just handle a lot. I don't know, but we, we processed the birds. They're in the freezer, except for, I had a friend who was moving and she passed on a couple chickens to me and about four of them ended up being roosters. Also with some ducks, we had a few too many. I think our ratio is there's seven boys and nine girls. You should have what I have heard, one male duck to every five female ducks or it's just, it's not good. It is not good at all. So some of those male ducks, our extra ones, are gonna go be with Jesus and we're gonna have some duck in the freezer as well. Then we, and we're keeping our females. We're gonna see what these duck eggs are all about. So we have, we have our equipment, we have our process. In a few weeks, I'm thinking at some point in October, I'll go after those extra roosters and we tried with the extra roosters, even with our large amount of hens, and not very, not very far into it, one of the roosters, when he was doing his rooster business with one of the hens, uh, killed her. So, and she was one of my old girls, one of my original barred rocks I've had for a while. Boomerang the Brahma, we've had her for a while. I mean, all of our chickens are named. They, the kids hold them. This is me being a kid holding a chicken under each arm. You know, our chicken naming game is strong here. And so our lead rooster is Mohawk. You've probably seen, hit, seen him in some videos. He's a naked neck rooster. There's nothing wrong with him. He is our lead rooster. Then we have a bantam rooster. Those are like the miniature chickens. His name is General. And he's just, he's a nice, good little rooster. And then we think we have a barred rock and we think we have a barred rock that we thought was a pullet. We actually thought it was a black Asian pullet. Turns out we think it's a barred rock rooster. Sometimes you get those little mix ups. So we'll see how that one continues. We really only need one rooster, but if you can have more than one, it's good so that if something happens to your main rooster, you got some backed up, roost, backed up roosters. But these four, like, mean guy roosters that we have. I don't have any nice words for them. I've offered them to friends, so maybe, maybe they'll get another home. But besides that, I can't have extra joker roosters killing my hens. So we're, we're done there. That's probably too much talk about my rooster, my rooster apocalypse that's gonna happen, but there's that. So let's see other updates. I know another one of the questions was, do we plan to be 100% self-sufficient? And then several folks have been shocked that since we started a homestead, I still grocery shop. So here's the thing. It takes a while. I don't, I don't think that we'll ever be 100% self-sufficient, but I think that every year we'll go a little farther. You know, this year we did well over 100 meat birds, tons of chi homegrown chicken meat in the freezer, and some turkeys. And as you hear, we're going to do some ducks. That's that's great. That check did that. Uh, this year, this year we at least planted and harvested potatoes for the first time. You know, we did that. We've of course grown our little our little homestead with goats and sheep. All of our poultry. We've got our dogs. We have our cats. 
Might be adding in an old pony if we can just get the right one lined up next year. As I mentioned, adding in a cow and two feeder pigs, you know, that'll be something new for next year. That'll be a new adventure. So those, so those are all steps in growing our little farm. Maybe the garden's gonna cooperate more next year, you know, that would be lovely. So it's a process. And, and coming out of this winter, I should have a lot more canned. But I am not, you know, I usually, doing this online thing, I find myself a hybrid rid of many things. I do not easily fit into folks' boxes, and I think that confuses some people. I'm just, I'm just different. What can I say? It's the way God made me, and I'm not broke. So just like when I did homeschool blogging, and then I started uh, like a hybrid site. It was like deals for homeschoolers, and I sold that in 2018. But there wasn't anyone doing that exact thing at that time. That was different. Uh, even now, like we're not a, a family vlog. We're, this could be a family vlog, I guess, as far as like family friendly. But all of my family is not involved in every detail of this vlog. It's the way that I do it. It's how I want to do it. It's my own little different thing. And then even with homesteading, you know, this is not the Justin Rhodes show. Although Justin Rhodes and Rebecca Rhodes is a great channel. Go watch it. I did some things. I have done some things with Homesteaders of America. I did some garden tours and such with them. Continue to learn from them. But really, like, I'm a learner as well. And I know there's another good channel, Art and Bree. And you know, they're like, these channels are, are hardcore, hardcore homesteading families. And they share that homesteading journey with you. Also, like Jess on Roots and Roots and Refuge, these are channels that I watch and I enjoy. But I'm not them and they're not me. We're all different, we're all on our different journeys. Folks told me, although I did not agree, that I was jumping in and doing too much and yada, yada, yada. I really looked at this pandemic and being a sudden homesteader, pandemic homesteader. Again, I knew this thing, it was not a 15 day thing. I just felt, and I felt like I could tell that we were gonna have months to work on some big projects. And I said, you know what? Let our, let's let our big project be instead of taking years to even get where we are now. Let's get stuff set up. Let's get some buildings built. Let's get some fences done. Let's get our animals here. Um, let's have a go at a garden. Let's get, what can I do? Well, see this year, I looked into doing pigs. I had some plan for some pig houses. I talked to some folks who could come and do some pig specific fences and buildings. Watched a lot of videos on pigs and I just felt I'm not doing pigs this year. Same thing with a cow. We researched cows. I got books on cows that I've read. I've looked at some cows. I even had a cow I was going to get, but then I kind of had a couple things at one time. I had like a weird back muscle and then pregnant, first trimester pregnancy. And I was like, I don't have to. I'm really, you, some folks may think I'm in a rush, but I'm really not. I'm, I'm enjoying this. It's a lot of fun. Kids love it. I love it. Also, Mr. Travis over here on his bulldozer, uh, he'll do whatever needs to be done. If I need excavation done for a building, if I need him to go and buy stuff for fencing, you know, he'll do, <clears throat> he'll do any projects and help me figure out projects. But homesteading's kind of like, you know, it's something I'm doing. Uh, he's got some, a project truck he's looking at. That's his thing. I don't really care a thing about the truck, but I care about him. He doesn't really have to care about my cow, but he needs to support me in getting my cow. So we just, uh, again, hashtag how to stay married for 23 years. We don't have to match in everything, but we love each other. There you go. That's the, that's the process. Also, also, I got some questions on here about our pool. Is the pool done? Did we get it? Can we see the pool? So let me show you the pool. Okay, you ready? There's the pool. We did finally get the pool. Actually, you know, Murphy's Law. We ordered, we ordered it in May. We didn't know that everybody else in America was getting pools this summer. We were a little slow on that. We went to just get a Walmart pool. They were out, so we ordered a steel pool from a local pool company. Hopefully it's okay. From a local pool company. And 
the days the pool was supposed to come came and went, came and went. Finally, by end of June, the office was talking real with me, like, we don't know when you're going to get your pool. Okay, thank you for that information. Kind of figured that out. We decided, though, we already, Travis, it's perfectly level over there. He brought in 24 tons of sand. He got some and brought it in. We also had a big truck from the sand company, from the quarry. That's it. They brought in sand. They worked days getting that pool area ready. That was like a big push, like, okay, the pool's coming, let's get this ready. Well, then we realized the pool wasn't coming. So he did a bunch of big tarps and like logs on it and stuff to try to save our sand. Because honestly, all that sand's probably $1,000 worth of sand. I mean, it's not, it adds up whenever you're doing this. So there you go, so we had our sand. And we already paid for most of the pool. So we decided, you know what, whenever we get the pool is when we get the pool. Next summer, our kids should have a pool. So, September 14th, we started our fresh homeschool year. September 14th, the pool came. So it is sitting there. We have worked on it several days. It is not, it is not ready. It will not be ready yet. Talk about fall projects. We really need to get the pool done. So, Travis is in charge of that. I'm not in charge of doing the pool. I honestly haven't done really much with that pool at all, so. Yeah. What does Mr. Travis do? He's uh, building a pool. Someone else wanted to know about our painting and different things with the house. And I also filmed a video recently where I redid our back porch. Our house has been painted. The shutters are on. The special like cedar shake wavy, just nice nice looking siding has been ordered. Look for that porch video if you haven't, but we went with darker browns and greens. I just, I didn't want to do what everyone else was doing. I've never done this, and so this is what I wanted to do. That's what I did. Yeah. Anyway, the siding will be in that peak. They're also doing some different um, work in like that 1970s bump that's under some of these windows. They're building a thing under that, and I'm sure it'll look amazing. So anyway, siding's coming for there, and then other end of the house will have siding. Again, it's like 5.30 at night now, so look for my porch video if you wanna see more of the house and all that, but I will take you around now. We will look at some animals. We also just had a underground drains. It's like money you spend on your home that you can't see, but we had a French drain put in the front yard to take water out. Um, when folks, when folks want to see things and see animals, way over there we have a little barn and a big, it's like a 100 by 100 fenced area. We actually don't have any animals in that area right now. Is rotating them. I've got the dogs up in a separate area. Of course, they can still come in the basement at night or whatever, but they've got some buildings there. And I've got another like mini pin area going on. I've got my bunnies, actually my, just my female in there. We think she had a false pregnancy earlier this summer. We had the male bunny in there with her. Again, she started making a nest, so he's back out. Um, over here, it's a couple acres of woods and that will be future projects. Down here, we got some jokers in a dome. Oh, and then I can show you this. So right here is where we usually set up for our plucking, and you can see evidence of that. So we put the kill cone on that tree, set up a couple tables. Again, over on Instagram, you can see pictures of this, set up our different stations. Our plucker sits about right here, and yeah, that's where we process chickens. Um, up yonder there is our little A-frame building. That is our brooding house. Now, whenever those last few birds are done, I'm gonna get a lot of hay in there. When folks ask me as far as preparing for winter, it's good to have hay on hand. I do have local hay sources, but the biggest thing in Virginia would be an ice storm. Again, this is not Wyoming where they've already had their snows. Uh, you know, winters going, go in there. We have had some cold nights already. We've had our first frost. That even goes back to the garden. Our first frost is usually not till like third week, middle of October. October, towards the end of October. We already had our first frost, like September 15th, and then the rest of the nights have been in the 40s. So, you know, things always, always going, but we don't have like heavy, heavy, 
hard, you know, below zero or even too much below freezing type winters in these here parts. We've got a bunny hutch around the corner there that our male bunny is in. Then we have goats and sheep in the garden having a good old time. And then we do have a few lone chickens in that area. They just like to live out with sheep and goats. And now our chickens didn't get let out today because we've been gone most of the day and some days they just stay in. But I will let them out and that way you can just see them. They'll go run and have a good old time. And they will probably only stay out for about mm, an hour and then they're gonna put themselves to bed. That is one question. Oh, I'll show you my, there's my jokers in jail over there. Um, one of the questions that I get is in reference to how do you get the chickens in at night? They've got, what we ended up doing was we put the ducks and the geese in our original long chicken run here and then gave them that coop. And then we did another run over here and that is where the chickens went. So anyway, we're gonna let them out because it'll just be, oh yes, you're excited. And they will have a good old time. It's actually feeling like it's gonna rain. And then we got these girls here, look. When they don't make it in, then they're sad and all they want to do is get in. Okay, y'all ready? So, because it's later, they will only be out for about an hour and then they're going to bring themselves in and their yard goes down there. Uh, they're going to bring themselves in. Y'all ready? And you'll see our rooster in here too. Okay, there you go. Enjoy yourselves. Have a little evening run. Yes, woo! Good job, good job. Freedom! Oh, look, they're looking at me. I don't have your scraps. That's our main rooster, our king man there. That is Mohawk. Yeah, you, I, I'm sorry. You got to do your thing. You, gotta, you didn't get out this morning, so enjoy yourself. There you go. They love this hill here, and they love to bed down in this woods, and then they go way down there in that woods a lot. And then that ridge fence project I was talking about, I want that to go start behind this duck coop and it would go this whole ridge and I want it to actually connect up there on the side of the garden they're having a good old time yeah so we've got a mix we got our barred rock we got Rhode Island red you think of all our names here Woo! oh yeah getting out for some evening fun got that one naked neck rooster we got all kinds of we got some bantams and then when they're out they just this is what they do they're just being chickens these chickens are coming up the hill and then over here we had spilled some feed the other day so they are like oh gold they're because this isn't their normal routine they're not quite sure what to do with themselves we got wood here we're working on stacking and we've been working on shutters the porch yes that towers there it will go away at some point so there you go friends this is our fall 2020 sudden homestead updates we've done some stuff we're doing some more stuff the best is yet to come all that jazz also house project wise we had our new wood stove installed in the basement so that's great we got about 4200 square feet here total so that heat will rise and heat the upstairs yeah that's what's happening so thanks for watching and i'll see you real soon with another brand new video bye bye